The Abris is one of the most powerful tools inside DCS to get information. And to get the most of it, you need to understand a few of the basic tools, including the search info and ERBL. And while they may seem basic, I want to give you the whys and the details that you know how to use them with confidence. So you can get this massive amount of info from the Abris at your fingertips when you need to. The next few videos, I'll be exploring some more features of the Abris before moving on to the data link, how to activate that along with some more Abris. Then moving on towards how you can get information to share with other aircraft not on your day link. And then finally wrapping up with a sort of general recap of this series. And given all these disparate facts and pieces of information I've given you, how to tie them together and when to use them to your best effect. With the default moving map options, you've got a scale in and out button which centers the map around the cursor or your aircraft, depending on which view you're in, and then scales it in and out, obviously. If you zoom out further than 1 to 25 kilometers, then the Abris declutters and hides a lot of symbology, which is often what you don't want. Info changes the Abris to a north up view. You get a red cursor box, which starts in your aircraft. Initially, it'll move left or right, and if you right click on it, pushing the button rotary in, it'll then change it to moving it up or down. Now, intuitively, if you click and drag on the mouse and you move it to the rightwards or upwards, that's the direction it moves in, depending on if you've got it going left or right and up and down. And likewise, if you were to click and drag leftwards or downwards, it'll move left if you're moving on the horizontal plane and down if you're moving on the down plane. So, If you move this cursor around open terrain and you press info again, you'll get more information like the bearing to go there or from there distance etc you know all those nifty things if you press info while well, there's one or more map points or the center of the map points inside the cursor box at that scale then every press of info will show you a more extensive information about one of those map points that was under the cursor here you see it cycling through the points that were under my selection so if you zoom out really far you can move it really quickly and technically if you wanted to snap it onto a point you don't need to scale in again very far unless you wanted to only select a very specific thing. So whenever you start using info, I advise you scale out as far as you need to to make the cursor move really quickly across the rain, terrain and then you know tap info until you get what you want or scale in a bit and then tap info. Do note that info will not snap to map lines or other sort of uh, graphical views, only map points. Now, this info is constantly updated to your current aircraft position. So if you move around, it will update its metrics based on that. However, the info curse itself remains static. So if you hook the wingman that's been flying away with info, a neat trick is to, without moving the cursor, just press info again. The cursor remembered what it snapped onto initially, and it'll snap right back to that wingman updating's present location. So whenever you want to know exact current coordinates of your wingman, just tap info again while you're still on the same screen and it'll hop to it, center the screen on it and give you the most recent info. If you press info, airfields will show the most additional info you didn't already see, including civilian or military, the name, height above sea level and the runway length. Unfortunately, it doesn't show if it's friendly, hostile or neutral, whether there's ammo or fuel, the runway directions, or QFE. You'd need to look through the kneeboard or F10 for that. This non-directional beacon shows frequency, Morse code, low altitude service volume, etc. Pressing 2 replaces your current flight plan with a one-way flight plan consisting of where you're now and that point. This unloads your old flight plan, and you may start to feel a bit of panic if you forgot to save it and you try to reload it. Going to menu, plan, now you just have to press activate and it brings back your old plan. Even if you have been setting up multiple twos and switching up your waypoint like that. Estimated range in bearing line or ERBL is initially similar to info and it also changes the Abris to north up. Except it shows you a little plus icon or a cross instead of a cursor. 
when you move around the cursor, it's uh, moving around this cross, and it's got a line attached to it. Now, essentially it's the same as info, except you can't actually press info on something to snap to it and get more exact coordinates to it. However, you now have the feature to press marker, which then places down a triangle, and it now measures from that triangle to wherever the current cross cursor point is. So you can use this to get two references from some arbitrary point on the map to another point on the map. And if you now press ERBL again, it sets a new marker at the current position. So you can keep offsetting this marker if someone gave you random directions saying from the lighthouse, 10 clicks due east, and then two clicks due south of that point. You can use this to navigate like that. Pressing info switches back to the info mode. But instead of the cursor box appearing back on your aircraft, it now starts on the ERBL wherever that cursor was. Similarly, switching from info to ERBL will start the ERBL at the info cursor. If you go back to the nav page driver, the cursor will restart from an airframe always. Note that ERBL can't snap to map points like info can and can't provide you with more info on that point like info could. Also, if you did press info while in info mode and it's locked onto it, you can't immediately you'll switch back to your BL. However, if you moved the rotary the tiniest bit, you'll get the option for your BL again. So if you want to snap to a known map point quickly, use info, scale out far, rotary over to it so it's the only thing at that scale or tap in for multiple times until you get the right one scale in move the rotary a small a small amount press ERBL when it pops up place a marker and then move it to wherever you need once you leave info or ERBL it'll be north up facing if you want the abris facing your heading again either cycle through all the nav pages until you get back to nav or go into your flight plan and then back to nav. In menu, setup, units, you can change all the coordinate systems that info and ERBL will show you. Degrees and decimal minutes is what's used by your PV800 and a few other airframes. So it might be worth switching that during your startup sequence. Note that MM is nautical miles. Note, if you also go messing around with these options, switching the Abris off and on again won't reset it for you. Search helps you find the nine closest airports, non-directional beacons, VHF omnidirectional range stations, or towns in order of proximity. Additionally, you can also scroll through the 17 closest flight plan waypoints, reference points, obstacles, and landmarks listed here. Use the rotary to scroll through options quickly. Info and 2 works pretty much the same as it would for the info tool. You also get estimated time of arrival and estimated time en route to the point at your current ground speed. Fuel for current fuel and REM for remaining fuel once you get there at the current airspeed. I haven't tested these calculations to see how accurate they are, but you can use them as a guesstimate. You've also got the name option. Use the rotary to select the alphanumeric character, press the rotary in to lock in that character and then move to the next. As you type in the beginning of something's name, the options for that partial search will show. Press name again to lock in the search and allow you to click on a new search, otherwise it freezes the screen. And now you can also use the rotary to scroll through the first nine options, starting with that name alphabetically, rather than by distance. You can then info or plot a course to it. Name also allows you to find places outside the nine closest originally listed. But for some reason, probably a bug, it doesn't work for airports at all. However, if you're not in Normandy 1944, you can find airports indirectly if you have their NDBs or VORs. Though, of course, they might not share the airport's name. Also note, Syria doesn't currently list any towns in search yet. You can't search for nav target points or data link targets, but you can hover with info over a currently selected target point or a data link target to see its exact coordinates. 
Just recall that uh, mission spawned target points will also have a duplicate reference point, which as a map point on the map, you can search for. If you really want to reacquire a dialing target or a nav target point that you created in mission quickly with search, press 2 after you've inferred over to it. And now it'll create a waypoint there which you can search for if you need to reacquire it later very quickly. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to add another layer of information on your Abris with a practical application. So once the fighting gets thick and the screaming starts, your Abris will give you everything you need to know to make snap decisions. I finally finished testing and merging all of this info I gathered for this series, so the next vids will be coming out quickly. This is Volk. Stay tuned.